Good morning, everyone. I see we have our faithful few here again. Um, and welcome to Dance Ministry Session 7. So today is very exciting. We are going to have Larissa speak to us on Kids Dance Ministry. And I can't think of anyone more qualified to speak on this topic. Um, so Larissa is currently heading up the dance ministry at Dr. Deo Brooklyn. And she's doing a fantastic job at it. And um, welcome to everyone and Larissa. We look forward to hearing more of you. So maybe just give a bit more intro about who you are and your passions. And um, then we look forward to learning from you today. Okay. Um, yeah, as Denise said, I am currently leading the dance ministry at Doxa Day of Brooklyn. Our dream is to have a full-time children dance ministry as well. But usually when it's like Mother's Day or some kind of special day, um, we get a few children that loves Jesus and that loves dancing and then we work out a dance and they also minister on those days. So children just have such busy schedules these days. So it's a bit impossible to yeah, get them to see each other weekly, um, but that's what we're aiming for. Um, and I'm a full-time dance teacher. I am qualified in hip hop and tap but I have also been doing a lot of contemporary and ballet over the years. So yeah, that is me. I am married. I don't have children. I have two dogs and that's about that. I love children. I have a big passion for children. Since I can remember, um, children was always something that I've been attracted to. And um, yeah, it just comes naturally for me to work with children. So I really think it's a blessing um, that God gave me. So I think let's jump into it. And the first important thing that I just want to mention that really changed my life um, when it comes to working with children is that there's really no small Holy Spirit. So you don't get a Holy Spirit that's on a child, like on a child's level and on a on a whatever, on whatever level. Holy Spirit is the Holy Spirit. So never underestimate children. Um, they can also hear the Lord. They can sometimes you need to help them interpret it, interpret a um, picture or so. But um, yeah, there's no small Holy Spirit. So that's really something that changed my mind, that like shift my mind, shift um, mindset. There we go. When it comes to ministry, children ministry and children dance ministry. Um, and also with children, they sometimes have very weird moves to express something, but never tell them this is not right or point your toes or do this obviously when you're working on a dance you can do that but when it's self-worship or just worship um, playing music and just tell them to dance and express you just let them be um, so yeah, um, we did a bit of practical sessions with children um, um, so we recorded the session and then my phone phone's memory were full so at the end it was only pictures and some voice notes but we got some few videos just to show you more or less um, what you would be doing in a children's dance ministry it's not just coming to class I think when when we did the dance ministry session like how to do your own dance ministry session it's basically the same with children you're trying to see each other at least twice a month like every second week um, if you can't see each other every week, because that really builds into the family of you, they get to know each other, they get to share with each other. Um, so it really helps a lot with that. Um, so one of the um, exercises that we did with the children was just discussing before you do a, a dance, just discuss what the dance is about so that they know what they're going to do on stage. So it doesn't just help teaching them all the choreography, but there's no emotion or they don't really understand what is this. So I took the example of thankfulness. Um, so we literally discussed what is it to be thankful? What are you thankful for? And I gave them papers and they could draw a picture. They could write sentences. It depends on the age. So when they are a little bit smaller, I suggest that they rather draw a picture of their bed, of their mom, of their dad. And then after that, just discuss a little bit about what is thankfulness. Yesterday, when we did this, I said to the, the kids, you weren't born with a bag of money. 
And then you bought your mom and you bought your bed and you bought your 10 fingers and you bought your health. And they all look like, yes, it's something that they never realized. And I think for children who can be a little bit selfish, um, it's just who they are when, they're ch when they are a child. Um, it's good to just realize that they really have a lot to be thankful for, to have a mom and a dad to, yeah, their eyes were like, wow, this is amazing. So yes, yeah, just a, a glimpse of what we did yesterday. Um, okay, can you see the video? Great. Um, so as I said um, just before, this, always do an intro um, when they see each other. Just like talk about the highs and lows about the week. What was good, what was bad, um, what was fun, what was stressful, or do like a little icebreaker. So here I just asked the, the kids to introduce themselves to each other. Um, so they just share their favorite food to eat, what was something fun that happened. Um, and yeah, that's actually just what happened here. And then I introduced just what we're going to do today. It just helps them to know, okay, this is what we're going to do. This is what we can look forward to. Um, so you'd see there's a lot of energy in the place. <laughs> All right, so then I'm just going to forward a little bit. Then we did the thankful discussion, what it is to be thankful. What are they thankful for? So, And they really took a lot of time. They took about 10 or so minutes just to draw a picture or to write some things um, and really give them time to think about it. And I also took my paper and did it with them. Um, yeah, so it helps. I think it's good for them to just think and realize what they really have to be thankful for. In the beginning, you, you, will, you will see they are thinking a lot and then it just all came and they couldn't stop writing. So that's that was really nice to see that they actually are thankful for a lot of things. Um, just gonna forward a little bit. Okay, then you'll see here, I, I stated shake of the shyness because a lot of times children are shy to dance um, like in like just free worshiping or just when when you say i'm going to put on some music let's just dance on the music they will kind of struggle to move especially the introverts the extroverts will take over the place and they will dance but when the, the kids are a little bit shy they might just stand in the corner and look at the other children so really encourage them that this is not about how good you are and um, you're not going to get critique afterwards i'm not going to tell you this is not the right moves or you need to do it like this you tell them you're going to express thankfulness on this song. You just wrote out everything that you are thankful for. Now it's time to express because that's what dance ministry is. Um, so what I did yesterday is just open the door and tell them to shake off their shyness. And that really helped them just to... So I opened the door and threw it out and they shook it off. So, and as I said, that just really helps to break the ice. Um, and then I, before this video, I just played the song for them just to get familiarized with the song. And then they really danced and look at their moves. It was so amazing. So if you just like prescribe them and say, okay, you need to do this. And on this moment, you need to jump. It defeats the purpose. The purpose of this is just to express thankfulness and it is a moment between them and Jesus so also tell them this is now not the time to talk to your friend or to make fun and jokes this is a time where you express your thankfulness to God so I'm just going to play you um, a piece a little piece of what they did on the song
Okay, yeah, so that was really cute, just seeing them, seeing them dance um, and expressing it. Um, so that's one of the things that you can do. I did a few short examples just to show uh, like ideas what you can do every week or whenever you get to see them. So something else that's really important when working with children um, is to teach them to use their face when they dance from a very small age. It's really something very difficult to learn when you are a little bit older. Um, for some people, it comes very naturally um, to smile on stage or to look sad or to look scared. But for children, I think it's very good just to teach them. So the best way is to let them remember a memory of when they were feeling that emotion. So yesterday I took the um, example of being scared. So when um, was a moment in their life that they were scared and then um, just give them a moment to think about it. And if they're willing to share, they can also share it because this is also something that, that we as dancers in a dance ministry experience a lot of times. I think Debbie and since you will agree with me, like when we do a, um, a dance, say for example, about forgiveness. Um, if you think about um, an experience or a person or something that happened that you need to forgive, um, it makes the dance so much more meaningful for you. So when it ministers to you first, it can minister to the people when you dance it on stage. And it's the same with children. So let them think about whatever the dance is about um, and let them experience that emotion again. Let them share a bit if they want to. And then when they do that dance, remind them, remember when you felt that way. And then they go back in that emotions. But in the end, um, they actually get healing through it when they do the dance. So that's, that's the amazing thing about um, ministry. So here was the moment where they um, just share about the things they are scared of. Oh, I just want to quickly share, it. I forgot. Um, just after the dance, I asked them a bit, little bit of feedback, like how do they feel now? And this girl said something so amazing. She said she got tears in her eyes because she just felt so overwhelmed um, of, about God's love and what he's done for her. And that was so beautiful. She was like, I was trying to hold the tears. And I was like, no, you don't have to. If you want to, want to cry, cry. So really encourage them to feel that emotion. I'm going to play it. It's in Afrikaans now, but you'll get the idea. I It was so cute the way she said she she struggled not to, to cry. Okay, so then we, um, after that, dancing with emotion. So discuss emotion of dance with realized stories for them to relate. Um, so it was really just, I gave them time to think about a story or a, um, something that happened with them. And then all of them actually wanted to share their stories. And all of them were able to listen to that and to relate. Um, so yeah, that was really great. Okay. Um, something else that, so that's, yeah, that's, that's really important to teach them that emotion. Something else that really works with children is to let them give ideas when you do choreography. So, um, let's say for example, the word says, I love you, Lord, your mercy never fails me. I can, I can do a move or I can do some choreography, which is great. But if there's enough time, and that would be ideal, to ask the children, what would you do to, to express this dance or, or to, to do the sentence, to explain the sentence to people? Um, and I sometimes use the words to say, like, imagine the people in the audience or that's looking at this dance, they can't um, hear anything. So they can't hear the lyrics of the music so you need to show them you need to tell the story or the lyrics through your movement and that really helps them to think about it to not just do any move because a lot of times they will just do a jump or a turn and when i ask them okay so is this how you want to express them and they're like mm, no it was just a fun dance you know so really help them to understand to show what you want to say through the moves and let them help you doing that obviously when they do um an arm that looks a bit weird you're not going to say no it's not right try to use that arm and just make it more yeah correct if you can say it like that um 
and then just a note on teaching choreography for children. Um, I know, Debs, you also asked a bit about that. Um, it really helps to tell a story when you teach choreography for them to remember it. Um, so I want to use an example now for it. Um, I know there was a piece of choreography that I taught in this week, actually, and they move it a lot to the right and to the left. But on a stage, um, they look to the right first and they look to the left. And then I said, it's like when you're crossing a road, you first look right and you first look left. So then they know, okay, that's the first part. Then I said, but then the next moment there was a, a big bump in the rope. So you need to jump over it because the next step actually have a jump in it and then you move to the other side and jump to the other side. And then they remember, okay, the next step is the jump. And then I said, oh my goodness. And then the road narrowed a lot. So now you need to balance because there was a little bit of a balance part. So then it's just help them to remember what comes after what. And in the end, it actually tells a story. So this wasn't a, a ministry song. So it obviously wasn't ministry related, but maybe tell a story through the dance. It's not always possible. Um, I know it isn't. But even if it's just the part that you see they struggle with. And then most children, I think, as you all know, re re repeat, repeat, repeat. Let them do it over and over again. But try to keep it exciting. Like, for example, say... Um, we're going to do it in slow motion mode now. So then you make the music slower and then you can see, okay, they know what happens after that. And then after that, you can say, okay, can we do a little bit faster? Um, and then you go faster, faster. And just for the fun, I sometimes make the music like extra fast. And then it's just like, just to keep the fun in the class. Um, or what I, what I also do sometimes I will say, I will say, okay, this was 60%. And I know you can give me 100%. And then they actually work towards that to get that right. And then the week after that, they'll come back and say, teacher, I think I'm 100% today. So it helps them also to practice by themselves because they want to achieve that 100%. Um, so yeah, just, that's just tip, tips, tips. <laughs> that's just tips um, to give them. Oh, also, when you teach choreography, you can look at them. That's most of the time the best to teach choreography, to actually look at them. But then you need to mirror the moves. Don't let them get confused. When it's the right leg, you need to use your left leg so that they think it's the right leg. Sometimes they will say like, teacher, hey, you're using your left leg. And I'm saying, no, you, you're too clever. <laughs> but I'm just, you do not confuse them in any way. Um, yeah, I think that's about that. Just a few tips about teaching choreography. Then um, when we get to outreaches, the children love to do an, any outreach. And the best um, outreach experiences that I had was with old age homes because they love children and children love older people and they're actually very gentle with them. So I remember, I think it was about two years ago, we went to an Alzheimer's clinic um, and the, the old people literally danced with them at the end and they took teddy bears with them. And so this let them obviously prepare for a dance but it also teaches them to give back. Um, once again, that little bit of a selfish um, thing that children might have sometimes, or I think all, any ch child <laughs> has a bit of selfishness into them. It's something they need to learn. Um, and it helps to let, teach them from a small age how to give back to community. To um, Because I think if you dance on a stage, it very easily might become a performance. Um, and then being like, I need to stand in front or I need to be very good because the people's watching me. Where with an outreach, I really experienced that they just, they, they let go. I saw a lot of emotion also with outreaches, more like on a stage. So that really helps. I think maybe if you start from scratch with a child, with a children dance ministry, try to avoid dancing on the stage for a few months. Just go on an outreach. Just go dance at a school or out at a, um, even at hospitals, sometimes you just need to arrange it with them, obviously. And I think in these times today, not, maybe not, <laughs> but um, yeah, maybe start with outreaches and then move over to um, performing on a stage and really teach them. It's not about the lights. It's not about the audience. It's still about you and Jesus. Um, sometimes they dance with Jesus, but also tell them, Jesus is also dancing with you. So when they get that ministered moment, they also can give back to the people. Um, okay, then 
just on a side note, when, we, when it gets to costuming with children, I think it's really important to teach them from a small age um, to not be focused on costumes, but also to teach them how to cover up everything. Um, it's really sad for me when I see dance groups dance on a Christian song, but they have like a bra toppy. <laughs> and their tummies are, are peeling out and it's very short skirts and all of that. That de defeats the purpose. So um, that is a normal dance. They can, they can wear that for a normal dance, maybe if they want to, if that's what the teacher wants. But it's very important to teach them from, from the beginning that this is what we wear, this is how we cover up everything. If we wear something white, we also we always wear something underneath. We make sure everything is covered. When you lift up your hands, it's your belly button feeling out. Um, if you kick your leg up, um, do you have something underneath? If you lay down on the stage, you know, to think of all the scenarios. And that also helps them when they when you give them the costumes, that there's not like a oh, this is not this is not a dance costume. It helps them to realize, okay, this is going to be great. Nobody's going to see anything. They're going to feel comfortable. Um, and it's something that you really need to teach them. But ask their opinion, ask their input. Like, okay, if you don't like this one, maybe we can do it in pink and add a bow, whatever. But um, it needs the, the focus needs to be on the dance. Um, yeah, it's really, it can be a big thing. So try to teach them that. Um, I'm moving quite fast. <laughs> if you have any questions, you can please ask and stop me. And um, then something that we also do as a dance ministry is some now and then just do a little bit of impartation. Um, so get a topic and just dive into that with them. Um, it's really also a way to build into their spiritual lives and let them ask questions. Children have a lot of questions. And I think sometimes it, is, it might be questions that they don't want to ask mom or dad or even at Sundays at church. Um, so give them the opportunity to ask them questions. Um, and if you don't know, I think it's very easy <laughs> to say maybe ask mom or dad or maybe, you know what, I'll come back to you. I don't know the answer. Um, but I'm going to ask someone that I think knows and then you come back to them, but never tell them, I don't know. Um, always get some kind of a thing to let them know, I will find out. Um, I think that's also, it lets them feel, wow, it's important. I remembered once um, a girl in my class had a question about something and I really didn't know the answer. And I did some trouble to figure out what is this. And the next week when I came and I said to her, remember you asked this question last week, her eyes were like, teacher, you did so much trouble for me. Um, so yeah, children really attach that importance to that. So really get back to them, make a note or um, put a reminder on your phone to get back to them. Um, the most really difficult questions. They, so probably most of the time you wouldn't have the answer on hand. It is. So well and done for that. Yeah, and even if you try to answer it, I know sometimes I'm like walking away and I think, Oh my goodness, what did I just say? <laughs> and there's nothing wrong to tell them the next week. You know what? Last week when I said that, just forget about that. I don't think that's the right answer. I, I rather think this because they remember. I remember things my mom told me from a very small age. And it's something that I actually didn't um, notice that she taught me. And obviously her in intense, her, um, what you, what's the words? Like her heart behind that wasn't to to scare me or anything like that. Um, I was busy. We, I was showering with my mom and I was put, fully putting my fingers into the drain part. And she was obviously scared that my finger might get stuck. But then she said, there's tiny little humans there underneath in the drain that's going to cut your fingers off if you do that. And I had such a scare of these tiny little humans. And I even thought they're like underneath my bed with little guns and they're going to shoot me and stuff like that. So be careful what you say to children because I was 21st, and on my 21st birthday, I remember telling that to my mom. I still had that thing about these tiny little humans underneath my bed. Like I literally needed to go for counseling, just like, it's not true. It's not a real story. And to understand my mom's heart behind that. So be careful what you say to children. Rather, rather say the truth, even if you think it's, above their knowledge or above their level they know they are much more clever than we think and i think it also comes back to that holy spirit thing that there's no small 
Holy Spirit. Um, I think Jesus will help them to understand they, that, um, especially when it's a, a question about, um, about Jesus or the Bible. Um, okay, then the last part that I want to um, talk about is something that's very close to my heart. I think that's my, my, my calling to do one day, but it's, it's a very new thing in South Africa. But it's called dance therapy or movement therapy. And that's something um, that we use our bodies with to um, really get healing over certain parts. So I don't have a much experience in it. It's a bit of glimpses here and there and stories here and there. But I've seen that the times that I've did um, children dance therapy um, was amazing. Um, the one testimony that I can give was a girl that um, has autism. She's um, really aggressive and her mom said she loves music whenever there's music playing she will just dance but she couldn't speak so i needed to find ways for her to yeah to actually make it happen she was about seven or eight um and that's where the drawing of pictures really helped so she understands what you ask her so i asked her to draw me her frustrations what's making her so angry um and Long story short, at the end, it came out that it frustrates her so much that everyone can speak except for her because she drew a little picture of, and then she, she drew a cross over her mouth. And then I realized, okay, that's what. And then obviously her children, uh, her mom took her to therapy to start draw, uh, showing with her hands, okay, I'm thirsty or I'm feeling like this or I'm feeling like that. Like you would teach a toddler. Um, I want milk, then do this, or, you know, to get that hand signs. And that really helped her. But just to get that frustration out by just drawing a picture. And then I, then I said, okay, can you show me with your body how you feel? And she literally laid on her tummy and she threw a tantrum on the floor. And then she eventually, when everything started to calm down, when she started to learning the signs, the music changed from rock and roll or like very, I don't want to say, um, Metallica, but it changed to a little bit more ballet, contemporary music, and just the change in her body and the flowing music. She, I think, she still does ballet, um, not like a normal ballerina would do on her age, but to express and to dance and to let her calm down. My mom says when she's feeling a lot anxious or whatever, she plays classical music, and that child just sits down or she would move around, just sway on the music. So there's so many amazing things that you can do with dance therapy. So um, this is exactly the example that I used when I, did the, when I did it with the children. Our time went up at the end. An hour was way too little to do everything. But I let them draw pictures of something in their life that really made them sad. And sometimes with that I, some, I feel bad because it's actually like you're recalling a memory or you're recalling something but to tell them that the the purpose behind this is not to let you experience all the sadness again from the beginning but rather let them get healing over that and the stories that came out yesterday was yeah it really I don't want to say shocked me but yeah it was really sadness it was I almost cried because I was feeling the sadness for the children so once again, I gave them um, time to draw a picture or to write the story, whatever they want. Um, and with that, also facilitated in the sense of play some background music, um, ask everyone to, to sit in their own corner or sit by themselves and maybe just first lay down on, they, on their backs. And then you can maybe um, tell them you are laying on grass and there's a lot of flowers and there's birds flying there's no people um because that really makes them calm and then and peaceful and then you ask them to write it down or to draw the picture then after that obviously they are sad they they aren't happy and all happy to dance or whatever so then just the music that you were playing in the background just put that a little bit louder and then you ask them to express with their bodies what sadness they are feeling, almost um, taking the sadness out of your body. So if you want to maybe take your heart and ask Jesus the part in your heart that's very, very sad, maybe give it to them. And then ask Jesus, what is he going to give back to you? So always when you ask something like that, 
with children when they need to give something to Jesus, always remember to ask them, to ask Jesus. You don't tell them. You ask Jesus to ask, okay, what are you giving back to me to replace that part in their hearts? So they draw the story. I played the music. And then some of them were literally just sitting. And they were a little bit swaying on the music, but not much. Some of them will do more moves, like really give it away or really touch their hearts. Um, but that's really something that you don't actually have to do. You just facilitate it. You play the music um, and don't just sit there and stare at them. I think it's very uncomfortable. Um, almost try to, to do it with them. So also think of, a, of something that's sad in your life now and just do it with them. Then they also feel it's not focused in or zoomed in on them. Um, so after that, when they danced on the music, um, you facilitate a piece of prayer. And that's really important when you when you say, God, this this was something that was so sad. And I know you know every girl's heart, yeah, and all the sadness and every story in the detail. Um, and then you ask, Jesus, I want to ask that as these girls gave their sad hearts or their sad memory to you, please will you give something back to them? And then you keep quiet because then you give the Holy Spirit a chance to speak to them. And the stories that came out, or most of the time comes out, is really amazing. It's something that I wouldn't even think about. Like, what would Jesus give it to them? And um, it's not your place to, to do that. You just facilitate it once again. So after that prayer, you give some, some time for them to listen to the Holy Spirit. What is he saying to them? And then you change the music. So from the peaceful music that's a bit of emotional and sad, change it to a bit more, I don't want to say like vibey, but more um, positive, if I can say like that, more positive feel, but still instrumental with no words. And then you give them another paper. So they need to get two papers. The first one is to draw the picture or to tell the sad story. And then you give them a new paper. And then you ask them to write down or to draw a picture because sometimes the Holy Spirit, especially with children, talks a lot through pictures or a word or something, of maybe sometimes a verse. And then they need to write that down when you play the new music. And also give them time because sometimes it takes some time for them to hear what Jesus is actually saying. Um, and encourage them to not listen to their own voice. Tell them the difference about what would Jesus say. Jesus would say things that's positive. Jesus would say everything that's full of love. Jesus would never say something bad. Or he would never, you know, so just to, don't make it too complicated. Um, they can hear God's voice, but just that little bit of, okay, this is, this is what Jesus would say. It would be something uplifting and positive. And then once again, give them time to do that. And then after that, you facilitate once again a moment of going back to the old picture. And then they need to do something with that picture. Some of them prefer to tear it up. Some of them prefer just to, you know, rubbish it in and throw it away um, if you maybe feel like you need to burn it um, you can even facilitate a moment to burn that picture but really get rid of the old sad memory and then you want to replace that memory with with that hope that God gave them because that's actually what it is and I, I always tell them you, your heart might not feel like you, everything is fine now and that's okay but you want to give them a sense of hope. Like this is what God's want to give you. This is what God wants to restore in your life. This is a new picture that God wants to imprint in your mind and in your heart. Um, and then they hold on to that picture. And then you again give them some time to look at that picture and to replace it. So that's actually a very big moment in that. And with that, you, you switch on the music a little bit louder and you give them time, um, time to dance and to express and I saw a lot of times, these are the times that they might start to do a jump or they might just turn with their arms open, turn around. Um, they might even just sit down and just say, thank you, God. Um, but that's most of the times where the tears come. But luckily, these are tears of, of hope and tears of release. Because um, I don't think sometimes children don't say, like, really, this happened, this made me sad. They would just kind of be sad. And then you don't know really what's happening with your child. And this is a great way to not ask her to tell you, but actually for her to 
to do that. Did you draw a picture? Did you have a picture? Did you have a picture? I think my mom would have a photo of me. What is that? A car key. A car key. A car key. Yeah, and then for them to, to once again move around because when, they, when you express through your body, it's as if that sadness comes out and as if there's a sense of hope and sense of joy that really comes out of your body. I remember being a little girl standing in church and um, being so overwhelmed by God's love but I was in a church that I wasn't allowed to clap my hands or to lift up my hands or to turn around. And, and it was really bad for me. And the moment that I had a place where I could just release and just, you know, it was facilitated that you can actually clap your hands or just throw up your hands or just turn around. Um, it's as if there's a whole part of healing that came into my body um, because your body, spirit and soul and that all three of them needs to be healthy. And I, that's where the body part of dance comes in with the spirit and the soul. So if your spirit is healthy, it flows out into your soul and it flows out into your body. And just that last shout of joy or just turn of joy, that's really when the healing starts to begin. Um, and yeah, then you can send them home with that picture and to maybe frame it for them, put it somewhere in their room so that they can always look back or when they came come to you and say, yo, I'm so sad again today, this happened or whatever. You can remind them of what God did um, in that previous experience. So um, I'm going to show you some pictures. As I said, my camera's memory went full, so I could only um, take some pictures. But I also asked them to just share in a short sentence what they experienced yesterday with some voice notes. So I'm going to try to do this now for you. Um, let me just get to the pictures first. So this is where they actually draw the first picture. Um, you will see she's sitting in her own corner. Um, she was falling. Oh, here she was telling about the things that happened, what, what made her sad. She was drawing pictures. Um, and then look at her face to tear that thing up um, and to get rid of that sad memory. It's what's really actually so special. So she was deciding to, to tear it up. And that was the second picture that she drew. So when I play you the voice note now, you will understand the story, but her grandfather died. And I mean, that's something really difficult. It's not like um, the sadness or the longing will just go away. It might improve, but every time that she might be stuck in that very deep sadness, sadness this is the picture that she can go back to. Um, and maybe put some music on and just ask Jesus to just remind her of the feeling that she had in the class. Um, because she wasn't happy afterwards, but she had so much peace. Um, so don't get that idea of, okay, a child's going to be sad and then she's going to be happy. Um, even if it's just a little bit of peace or a little bit of hope, like I'm feeling better, but not not yet. Then it's also okay because it's a process. Sometimes God can do things in an instant. But sometimes it's a process. Um, so that, yeah, that was a new picture. Um, so I'm going to um, play you her voice note that she said. Uh, my opa, um, what I'll do it is, um, who I do it, I'll get a in my opa, it's a special for God, and it was really for my God. And um, the end day, um, Het papa een kool gekry wat sê opa het getrip op die tap op die oude huis waar hy blij en toe bloes hy kop so baie hy het uitgegaan. So ja. En toe wat jy nou vrees is dit vertel het wat sy vriendje het hy vir jou gegeen? Wat het hy vir jou gesê? Hy het vir my het gesê Ja, dit het nou gebeur, maar jy moet met in my vertel alles al goed uitwerk. Jy gaan nie, jy gaan nie, jy is nie vergeet in jy. Ja, so daar, that part which she said, um, she won't be forgotten. I think it, it might, um, she might have felt like her grandfather fell and Jesus maybe wasn't there. And this, just that reaffirmation that God said to her, I'm always going to be there, you're not forgotten. Um, 
maybe also give that that sense of hope. And she she told she told me afterwards that she's so excited because she knows she will see her grandfather one day in heaven. So um, and that picture is a remembrance of something about that. So the the cha- the the it shifted from being sad, almost trapped in sadness of a grandfather that died and it moved to a bit more, I have hope, I will see him one day. Jesus said he will never forget me. Um, so that was the first story. Then this was the second one. So I'm just going to show you again the pictures of um, when she started to draw the picture out of, by herself. Um, and this was her dad. You will see this is the drip. And her dad was very sick and she was scared that um, he's not going to live anymore. And she actually, she didn't tear the picture. She just um, threw it away. And that's an important part of the process to, to do that. Otherwise, they can keep it. And look at that smile. Um, the Lord is on the, the there's love on the other side so so it was like a thunderstorm that happened and then the rainbow that came and the father is okay now he didn't die um just that i think it was maybe a very traumatic experience for her um and to know now that there is love on the other side so i'm going to quickly play you her part my boy was sick and I kon I passed him off in the hall and do it Jesus for him to the doctor Shakhia and sisters what on work out that on live and talk to work. Okay, so what? And that's now okay. So what is what is that? What is this? What is this? I just want to say I just want to my friend Shakhia what say there's love on the other side. She is more. So this is a donor book. Wat boog gereen het en nou is toch een reen boog nie en ons is nou kei. Sjoe, wat is goed nie? Kei. Sometimes you need to just help them interpret the picture or just help them to make some, or to add some meaning to the picture because a lot of times they will get this amazing picture but they don't really know what it means um, and that's where the Holy Spirit comes in when you need to listen and to be um, you know, in tune with Him to ask Him, okay, Holy Spirit, what did you want it to say to this child? Um, okay, there's two more left. This was the other girl. So this is one of the examples that she, she got a picture, but she wasn't sure what the pic- picture meant. So that's where she was still drawing it. Um, something that makes her sad is um, animal abuse. Um, and I think something happened with their animals as well. So it's a story that's really close to her heart. And that's the picture that she just got this picture that she drew here. It's a ballerina's leg with the tutu. But she didn't know what it's about. So I'm going to quickly play you the story. Okay, I think that is dog. Um, the a teken van van ballet wat ballet vir jou doen. Hoe voel jy as jy ballet doen? As jy klop ballet vir jou net. Ja, ek voel vry en gelukkig dat ek myself kan doen. Ja. So as jy hart sê, dan is ballet en dans vir jou een manier om al die emoties te kan uitdans. Nee, soos wat ons nou nou gedoen het. Kijk, so dit is te goed. Ja, so that was really amazing for me to I, I immediately experienced that ballet is an outcome for her to feel free and she said to be herself um, and that's actually such amazing testimony she's an introvert um, she's a very quiet young lady um, with such a beautiful heart and it was um, she also has they were a big family with a lot of children and I think for her um, she's the oldest to come to ballet and just to express and just to be and feel better afterwards um, that's another testimony of what dance does to I say eh? so that was really um, special for me and for her this picture might mean when she gets to home and she's not feeling well or she's feeling sad or anxious or scared to put on some music and dance and that's what I encourage her to do um, because it really makes her feel better and um, okay and then the last one so her um, she actually wrote it down here her mom died oh, her mom her grandmom died sorry she said yeah Uma. 
uh, Makresi. And then Nika, I think it was her dog. Her dog died. Um, and obviously it was very sad for her. She also teared it up. And then what was so amazing, she told it afterwards that she she got a new cat in, in the placement of her dog. And there was a newborn niece that was born in, in the place of her grandmother. And for her to realize that there's a, a body that died, but there was also new new life that were born. Um, I think that it was such an amazing thing for me to realize that for every every life that that goes to heaven, there's also new life that's being born into this world. Um, so this was her testimony at the end. My hond het dood gegaan en my oma grootje het ook dood gegaan. Toe het ek twee nieuwe katte gekry en ek het een nieuwe nichtje gekry. Wow, en hoeveel jaar nou? Blij. Blij. And then afterwards she told me that she didn't realize that, inst- that she got a dog or a, like an animal in, st- in place of the other animal and the life um, feature on, on a, a life, um, a new life that was born um, from this. So, yeah, that was really amazing. Obviously, it's not the full video now of what they did and what they experienced, but um, it was great. And afterwards, I just want to show you this picture. They were sharing with each other what happened. And there was, I didn't ask them to do that. They were just, as they um, were getting their things, and they were backing up. And then I heard the next moment they actually share with each other, like, what did you draw? And what did, what did Jesus say to you? And what was it like for you? And that was so special. Look at that faces. They look so glad and so happy. And when they left, they said, oh, please, can we do this every Friday? So I think it was really a, a great experience for them. And that's what that's what we want. Um, so yeah, that's it. Let me just get back to you guys. Oh, the screen share. There we go. All right. So that's all from my side. Um, obviously, it was just a, a little bit um, like a drop in the water. But it's something good to just start you off. Do you have any questions or any comments? I don't, um, thank you very much, Larissa. This is really very helpful. I made lots of notes. I'm a children's pastor at Willows Methodist Church. And um, so, I mean, obviously, this is a, a very specific ministry, the dance ministry, but I think I can even within, you know, the bigger group, like um, I usually do the large group meetings and then they split up in their age groups. And I think even a lot of this I can use, um, you know, in the large group of obviously, I mean, we are all wearing masks. So that makes one side, the expressive side, a bit more difficult. But on the other hand, I thought, well, you know, it makes it maybe a bit easier because they hide their expression you know, so, um, but yeah, um, you put the ideas in my mind and, uh, you know, I, I don't know if I'd be able to start, um, you know, like a, a, a dance ministry, like a group, but maybe I can, but um, yeah, you put ideas in my mind. So thank you. It was very practical. So it's good. Oh, I'm so glad to hear that. And I, I think with children, especially with children, it's very important to Um, make the environment for them safe and to know them, to build a relationship with them, to ask them about their lives. And then they are very, very willing to share what happens. Luckily, the the children of yesterday, I actually know all of them individually. And I think that made the the whole session so much easier. Um, So to build that relationship, and it doesn't have to be dance as in ballet or hip hop. It can just be a movement just a jump just the clap just the wave so um yeah i'm so glad to hear that thank you anything else i think from my side it was just so special to hear you know the way that they the way that they process things you know the way that it it becomes a tool for them to translate thoughts Mm -hmm. um so that was so special. And some of the moments that you were showing how they were drawing and so on, I got like choked up because I was like, that's so incredible. And I think oftentimes, even us as grown-ups, you know, 
also miss those moments. You know, mm -hmm. also we need to journal or draw a picture or whatever about something that God's revealing to us. Um, mm -hmm. So I think I also learned something from them this, this morning. Great. Yeah, no, it is. We are just, we are also children, children of God. So we can do it and to be like a child. So that's very true. Okay, I think that's it then. Thank you so much for joining. And I hope everyone that listens to this, um, yeah, just be inspired by the Holy Spirit and to do your own thing. A lot of these things really happened, was born in, in, in the Holy Spirit's heart in me, if that makes sense. <laughs> so, um, yeah, and we're praying for you also, ladies, doing a great job there. And um, I really pray that you can, that this can help and be helpful for you.